So there's a video going around by Dr. Shiva uh, Ayodhya, and uh, in it he puts up this graph here, and it's a, it's a metric of something that he plots based on the votes in Kent County, Michigan, and he's confused as to why this line slopes down. Uh, so what I did is I set up a kind of a simulation of, uh, of, of voting possibilities to explain why that happens. And I, as you can see, I've kind of duplicated the line sloping down here. Now, he has this other thing here where he says the line kinks off to the side, but really that's just a, a very arbitrary way of uh, drawing a line through here. You could very easily just draw a straight line through the entire thing as, uh, as I have here. Uh, so what's actually going on here? Well, I set up this simulator so this square here represents all of the voters. On one side, there's the people who normally vote Republican. On the other side, there's the people who normally vote Democrat. And we can move uh, between the two. So we can kind of simulate different precincts where, for example, the Republican vote is very low, like over here, and precincts where the Democrat vote is very low and the Republican vote is very high. And that gives you this, this graph of different precincts throughout Michigan. Some of them are more Democrat, some of them are more Republican. Uh, in Kent County. So what's actually, what is this graph? What is it representing? Well, it's a little a little confusing based on his description, but I, I eventually figured it out. He's taking uh, on the x-axis here what he calls the straight Republican Party score, which is the percentage of people who just voted for Republican straight ticket divided by the total number of people who voted for straight tickets, which is the Republican straight ticket plus the Democrat straight ticket. And we're ignoring all of the parties for now because they're pretty small in this analysis. So it's essentially this rectangle here divided by this larger rectangle, the red plus blue rectangle. Uh, then against that is plotting uh, the difference between that and the same thing for individual voters, people who, who chose to vote for individual parties in each race. So they could vote, say, uh, for one party for the Senate and another party for the president. So it's the ratio of this rectangle here, the Republican individual uh, Trump voters, uh, the, Trump, the individual Trump voters, to the individual Biden voters uh, over here. So it's this rectangle divided by this rectangle, but it's not just plotting these two, it's plotting the difference between them. So we can see if I put that back and move from left to right, we have this difference here between the two, and you can see it's plotted over here. Now, Ayodhya's key mistake is that he assumed that all people who were Republicans would vote for Trump because Republicans all love Trump so much. And of course, this isn't true. If it was true, you get what he says he should expect, which is a flat line centered around zero because the the proportions of these two things never actually changes. It's always the exact same proportions, this to this and this to this, the exact same proportions. Of course, if you add something into the mix, like uh, Republicans who vote for Biden, Republican individual voters who vote for Biden, and Democrat individual voters who vote for Trump, then this changes things. Now, if we uh, go through the various proportions, you see we get a sloped line. And it's always going to slope down. It doesn't actually matter uh, whether you've got like all Republicans or all Democrats switching. It's always going to slope down. Uh, the reason is because that this ratio here always goes from 0 to 1, whereas uh, this one goes from uh, different values. But the point is, that if you introduce something like this, which is an expected thing, we expect people to do this, you get this slope with this downward sloping line. And you can see this downward sloping line is you know, similar to what we get in, in this graph. And you can adjust the amounts of people. I think perhaps more Republicans would actually vote for Biden than Democrats would vote for Trump. And that changes the graph to be more like the one we see in the picture here. Uh, of course, it's more complicated than this. This is a fairly straight linear thing. Things might happen, for example, like the, the proportion of people who vote Republican straight ticket might not be the same as the Democrats. They might be more. Uh, or it could be the other way around. Or it could be, in fact, that uh, it's skewed so that the more people vote Republican, the more likely they are to vote uh, a straight ticket and vice versa. So it could end up something a bit more like this, which is even more of a straight line. So I think this kind of illustrates a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you know, this graph here, 
the fact that he's confused about how he could be slowed down. Is he actually confused or is it a bit misleading? I don't know. I tend to assume that he's just a bit confused, but um, perhaps he has a preference to express here and he's expressing it by maybe deliberately misleading. I don't know. It's just a speculation on my part. And the other point is that it's it's actually quite complicated. Uh, it was kind of difficult at first to, to follow his, his explanation of uh, where these numbers actually came from. And uh, it took me a while to replicate the graph, which I, I did eventually replicate the exact same graph. Here's, here's my version of it. It's basically the, the same one. Uh, and, and it's not intuitively obvious as to why the line would slope down. I thought initially that uh, if we had the these flipped around then it would the line would go up but of course that doesn't doesn't actually happen the line goes down no matter which way around you have it so it's actually an unintuitive metric and it's also kind of um in some ways kind of a pointless metric because it doesn't really tell you anything because there's so many other variables like how does the split between uh split ticket voters the people who vote one party for one one seat and one for another how does that vary based on the percentage of people uh, voting one way or the other. I have it skewing here uh, for the the amount of straight versus individual, but you know that that too is uh, is unknown as to how much that's an actual factor. Uh, but it didn't really take very much for to replicate the the results as we uh, we see them more or less the same here as they are in the graph below. So there you go. There's there's no real significance to this other than showing that some people flipped their vote for president from their normal party preference.